Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and in this uh, short video I'm going to have a look at uh, this display. Uh, this happens to be a BenQ SW2700 display. Um, it came out a few years ago uh, but I've used it regularly and one of the reasons I'm looking at it here is I've had quite a lot of questions about my use of it in these videos. Uh, it's currently connected up using DisplayPort uh, link to an oldish MacBook Pro where it works really well. In fact, I use this monitor. It's been carted about and it's been set up when I've had to make a um, you know, temporary product photography studio in a factory or something like that for photographing parts or you know, small bits and pieces. Um, it works really well. Um, it has an Adobe 98, you know, near Adobe 98 gamut, so I have no problems in colour work with this, particularly since a lot of my commercial work will be supplied at, in the sRGB colour space, or occasionally in a larger colour space where it's needed to capture specific colours. But uh, most of the time, most people won't notice the difference if you send it to them in sRGB and it causes less problems. Now, a bit of heresy there for some people who are really into using large gamuts and things like that. But um, I'm a commercial photographer. I use what works. Um, the monitor, 27 inch. It's a 2880 pixel, 2880 pixel across here. So it's not a really high resolution one, but that doesn't matter because I use it with Max and the display resolution gives quite a nice scaling to the image. Now it's hardware calibrated. Now that means I use, there are others you can use with this, but I use um, X-Ray i1 Display Pro Calibrator. Plugs into one of the USB ports side here, drops through this little hatch on top of the uh, monitor hood and uh, use it, you use it for doing your profiling and calibration. I would say this is hardware calibrated, so uh, use the BenQ software with it. Now, hardware calibration means there's much less work for the graphics card to do. Uh, it gives better quality, better consistency. Um, it also allows me to set several different settings, default settings, for uh, the calibration of the monitor. Now, this at the moment, and there's a little USB puck here that plugs in the back that uh, controls it. Now at the moment I've calibrated this monitor to what is a very low color temperature for uh, a monitor of only 4000K. I can do that because it's a hardware calibrated monitor and I can store that calibration in one of the settings here that's accessible either by the on-screen display, there's some buttons along the bottom here, um, or I can do it via this control puck. Now, why the low color temperature? Well, I'm shooting this video in um, the corner of my kitchen. Um, I have halogen replacement LED lamps above. I have some daylight coming from several other places, a uh, reflector for uh, some of the halogen lights. That gives a color temperature which varies, but is typically mm, three, three and a half thousand, maybe 4,000, depending on the daylight. By having this monitor set at 4000, color temperature works relative, matches relatively well to the lighting environment, which means that from the point of view of making a video here, what I hope you're seeing is a pretty good rendition of color on the monitor. Now it's not perfect, and if I want to show something, a picture or something, I'll do an inset into the, uh, into the video or something like that, but it just makes it easy for doing this. Normally I'd calibrate my monitor to uh, D65 for general use, um, certainly the laptop set to that, and in comparison with this, it looks very blue, uh, the screen on that laptop there. But I can set this one for D65, uh, Adobe 98 color space, perfectly good for editing. If you work in a relatively low light environment, and you can have control over lighting and things, and you want a bit more precision, it might be worth experimenting, and you do this at other monitors as well, it might be worth experimenting with a color temperature of say 5500 or D55. Uh, it will take some getting used to because it will often look quite dim and gloomy, particularly for print work since you want to set your monitor brightness at 
probably no brighter than 100, 100 or 120 at absolute tops if the room is relatively bright. Um, the main monitors I do my editing on currently are set to 90. Uh, they're the, that's the 32 inch uh, SW320 that I looked at recently. Uh, was that the 320? I don't know the numbers. You can look it up. But it's, yeah, it's model numbers you get mixed up sometimes. But anyway, this one here, 2700, the current version is the 270. It has more ports. Um, on the back of this, I've got a DVI-D connector, which I don't use anymore for that. There's a display port and there's an HDMI port as well. Now, newer versions have more ports on them. They have a few more options that you can do on it. Uh, nice that there's a card reader at the side here and two USB ports. The, there's a USB connection down to the computer so that your monitor acts as a USB hub as well. Um, I've used this monitor for several years. I particularly like the fact that you know, it's got a hood with it, which is great for when I'm working in sort of factories and things. Saves for a bit of glare. Uh, it has, uh, it's easily adjustable for height, and there's a handle at the back I can lift it up by to cart it around by. So, in using a monitor like this, a few other things to take note of, and as I've covered these in articles and other stuff as well, and a few videos about monitor setup, is be sure to calibrate. Um, if you get something like this X-Ray i1 display, it will come with its own software. You do not use that software to calibrate hardware, uh, calibrated monitor like this. Use the BenQ software. It has the ability to get inside and adjust the settings internally, which the X-Ray software doesn't. Now, the BenQ software doesn't work with the laptop, um, so I, I would use the x -Rite software to do the laptop and the BenQ software to do this. Uh, it's a minor irritation, but they each have their strengths and weaknesses in different respects of that. But if you're using one like this, use the software that BenQ supplied with it. Um, the newer monitors, if you go higher up, they have things for uh, soft proofing and various things like that, but you don't probably need that on that. The reason I use this is just convenience. Uh, it works. Uh, it's a very good monitor. Uh, this monitor I've used in the past for lots of my big prints. This monitor is the monitor that I assembled the 47 foot long print I made a few years ago. Um, I've worked with this monitor for years. It's virtually unchanged from when I set it up a few years ago. Um, and it doesn't look any different. Um, it just works. But what I would say is if you're looking for um, a not top end monitor, give something like this a look because it's a bit more quality than the cheap lower end ones. Certainly if you're doing the work professionally, you want to consider something like this or maybe a more expensive one. But you don't need to spend vast amounts on monitors. Not unless you're in very specialist uh, color, work, color management territory, uh, if you're doing pre-proof or something like that, where color is absolutely critical. So. There are more expensive ones, there are cheaper ones. This sets a nice sort of level from my point of view. But I said, do have a look at the review because there's more detail on that. But in general, a good monitor will benefit your photography. And uh, certainly if you print, something like this is quite helpful. Now this is where I press one of the buttons and find, there we go, that's Adobe RGB. Now that's brighter, it's quite a bit brighter. That's a general editing uh, setting. Now, on this video, this probably looks much worse. That's why I set this up. Um, if I go back, there we go. There's the calibration for here. There's the warm calibration. So that's the warm calibration that I've set up for video. That's my editing calibration. So it's quite relatively dim. And this is the throw everything at it to look good. That's the full one. But of course, on the video, it probably doesn't look as good. It'll be burnt out or whatever. But um, you have full control over these. Let's go back to the uh, one I've set up for the monitor here. 
um, for, for video works well. But uh, if you've got any questions, please do ask. Um, I've got lots of other stuff like this. Hope these little sort of snippets are of use and uh, please subscribe to the channel if you find them useful. Thank you.